Good morning, Columbia, and especially to Lena today with a little music to remind them of home. Our pleasure, Leonid. A happy Thanksgiving to you. This day is a big family event throughout the United States. How are you celebrating it? Well, thank you. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. We're going to celebrate it here and right after this interview with a meal of turkey and cranberry sauce and some pumpkin cookies and pecan pie. So about as traditional as you can get uh, being 150 miles up. As I was saying, it's a family day and all of you guys are family men, I understand. Have you been able to speak to the folks back home? Well, as a matter of fact, we were able to speak to the folks back home. We had, uh, some of us had family conferences yesterday, and some of us had family conferences this morning. And I tell you, being away from home, uh, it, it's always nice to be able to, uh, to talk to the family and know that they're doing well and to maintain those ties with the folks back home. I'd like to stay with you, uh, Winston Scott, and uh, also to Taco Zoy. The shuttle flight has been a little more exciting probably than you expected. You had to do a spacewalk to retrieve the Spartan Observatory. Observatory. Um, what were you thinking as you were doing that? What were your greatest concerns? Yeah. Um, well, we are trying to uh, the capture the Spartan, so I was just thinking how to capture this Spartan satellite, and uh, we are worried about uh, that the Spartan of light uh, that the altitude because uh, we didn't know uh, whether that uh, it has uh, it had uh, an easier attitude for us to capture or it might be very difficult so that was the only concern but at that time we were just determined to capture this of light right uh, going to you commander kriegel you uh, it was your job to steer the shuttle for that operation um what were you concerned about when you were doing that Well, of course, my primary concern is uh, the safety of my crew, uh, which it always is. But uh, the flying qualities of the shuttle are, are really uh, very nice. So believe it or not, uh, being able to fly the satellite to within just a foot of both uh, Winston and Takao was really quite an easy task. Jerry, with uh, Mr. Scott and Mr. Doy at all? Having the shuttle only a foot away? I'm sorry, you were breaking up. Can you uh, say that question again, please? I was asking Mr. Scott and Mr. Doy if they were at all frightened having the shuttle just a foot away. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I mean this sincerely, that was some excellent flying that Kevin did. And uh, while we were standing out there with the satellite uh, just a few feet above uh, our heads, I at least wasn't uh, afraid at all. It was very, very comfortable. I was more concerned about handling that large mass. The you know, Spartan is about 4,000 pounds, which is more than most automobiles weigh, and to uh, be able to capture something like that manually, orient it, and berth it was, was a, more of a concern of mine than, uh, than the flying. It really some outstanding uh, flying with Kevin Spartan. Congratulations to you on that successful spacewalk. But I understand that you're conserving fuel right now. Uh, for a possible relaunch of the Spartan Observatory? Is that affecting your day-to-day -day operations, the microgravity experiments that you're conducting? Well, the folks on the ground are, are doing most of the hard work figuring out ways that we can get all the science that we plan to do and also conserve uh, fuel. They're just doing uh, using their bag of tricks. Um, and hopefully we'll have enough fuel to maybe perhaps uh, do another spacewalk or hopefully uh, deploy the Spartan satellite and get one of the primary objectives of this mission out of the way. 
another primary objective was to uh, test out a prototype free-floating television camera. I understand it's about the size of a basketball. Uh, is that still going to ha happen, or has that been put off because of the problems with Spartan? Well, that's the uh, Air Cam Sprint. It's a little bit bigger than a basketball or a beach ball, and it's a free flyer that pilot Steve Lindsay is planning to fly. But it needs to be deployed uh, during the spacewalk. So this particular spacewalk, the time that we spent capturing the Spartan, ate up uh, that time, unfortunately. So unless uh, we get the go to do another spacewalk, we'll have to save that uh, particular experiment for another flight. Why is the Spartan Observatory so important to this mission? What does it do? Well, the, the Spartan satellite is going to be looking at uh, the sun, which, of course, the sun affects life here on Earth. And particularly, it's looking at the solar wind and temperatures and try to understand those characteristics, and particularly solar flares. We know solar flares affects life on Earth, and it affects our satellites that we come to depend on day to day. So really, it's trying to understand that the celestial body that affects us uh, everywhere here on the Earth. Well, people down here on Earth are always very interested in life up there in space. And this particular mission on this uh, shuttle, Columbia, is particularly remarkable because it's very international. Um, I'd like to ask how that's working out. Does that affect the way that you relate with each other? Yeah, I'm very uh, lucky that I am a member of this international uh, the, the crew, and uh, we are having fun exchanging uh, our, the original the, the native food or uh, discussing uh, in uh, native languages sometimes. And uh, it's, it's just fascinating to work with uh, other people with different cultures, and uh, it's a way that uh, space dinner should be in the future. Right. I should mention that apart from Commander Kriegel and Winston Scott and Taco Odoi that we're seeing, we're talking to you right now, there's also Kalpana Chawla, who's originally Indian, I believe, and Leonid Kodenyuk, who's a Ukrainian. Um, have they been, uh, have they been uh, contributing also with, their, uh, with insights from what they've learned in their countries? Well, they certainly have. As a matter of fact, uh, during our evening meal last night, KC, uh, Copeland, a traveler, we call it KC for short, uh, played some Indian music for us and also some Hungarian folk songs. And we all had, uh, all had a ball. And the other is doing the same thing. He's teaching us uh, some greeting in uh, his native language from the Ukraine. So we all are learning a lot from each other and just having a ball doing it. Great. I'd like to go back to Takao Doi. I understand this is your first flight. How do you feel for this first experience? Yeah, since I was uh, a child, I uh, wanted to, uh, to go to space and explore Eva, so it's uh, just uh, my uh, dream come true. I was uh, just fascinated uh, by watching the Earth and uh, doing EVA. Especially during the EBA, we had a panoramic view of the Earth and uh, the universe itself, and uh, I really enjoyed being out there. I should explain to our viewers that an EBA is a, is a spacewalk, an uh, extra vehicular activity, I believe, that it's short for. Um, back to Commander Kriegel, I'd like to ask you, sir, um, how do you look at this mission? Do you think it's been a success despite the disappointment with Spartan? Well, each mission holds uh, little surprises. I think one of the great things about human spaceflight is the ability of people to adapt. We had a little difficulties to overcome. We overcame them through uh, teamwork here on the orbiter and also several hundred people on the ground who very quickly came together with a plan, uh, communicated that plan to us so that we could recapture uh, the satellite. So I really think it's a success and that the versatility of humans working in space. Congratulations to you on that.
Uh, we've spoken a little bit about the solar research that uh, this mission uh, has been trying to uh, accomplish. Let's look at the other primary objective, the microgravity experiments. What are they about? Yes, uh, we have been running uh, the material science experiments uh, in this uh, mid-deck. It's called the uh, mid-deck robot experiment. Actually, they are three experiments uh, from uh, combustion science to uh, uh, investigating uh, the wetting characteristic of materials and also the, uh, the interface phenomena. So we are carrying uh, the, the material science experiment in this mid-deck. Also, we have other material science experiments going on in the pair of the bay. How will your discoveries in those experiments be put into action? Well, a lot of the work that we're doing here is uh, pure research, and they're looking at things like we're looking at how to make semiconductors, make them more and more reliable. Uh, of course, you can see the application of that in electronics. Along the same lines, we're doing a helium experiment that measures temperatures to a very, very small degree. And we're using this, again, to be able to make things smaller. Uh, we're doing a lot of material science uh, that's looking at the structure of metals, trying to understand how they join together, perhaps make uh, stronger metals. I like to mention one of the experiments, Mephisto, is a combined U.S.-French experiment, again showing the international flavor.